everyone thank you for joining us we are thankful you you could be with, with us it's a lovely sunday morning thank you for joining us even as our country is going through a, a lot of uh, power surges power problems network problems but we still have, have to meet and have the word of god you are welcome we welcome you our household welcomes you mansa and chilanga household Welcomes you to this lovely house of talk. Been trying to bring in my my co-host. My co-host has been trying to join, but of course, there are a lot of network problems. Please uh, bear with us, even as we record this uh, this talk, even as we, we interact with you. Bear with us, have patience. The network is not so good, but we will still continue to discuss the word because nothing should hinder us 
My co-host should be joining us momentarily. She's been having trouble with, with network. I think she had to find a better place to find the network. Yeah, welcome, all of you. Please, uh, as a show of uh, uh, as a show of uh, just to help us test the the connection. Please let me know if you can. If I'm old, if my audio, my audio is all right, just write in the comments for me if the audio is okay and the volume. Can you hear me? How's the video? Uh, we post chat because we're streaming and my co-host is also on now. I'm so sorry. We are having a network challenge, but we'll, we'll continue going on. But please let me know. I'm loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you, Kaz. That's my cousin, Chidufia Chichimba. You're welcome. Thank you for listening in. Awesome. So, uh, not to waste time, we will go right into it. The Word of God seems to be what is going to give us hope in these times of confusion and trouble. It's just the earth telling us that we need to go back to what what we are supposed to be, how we are supposed to look at things, how we are supposed to live, the way we, we, we do things. Yesterday we were doing our village cell meetings in one of the rural areas in Mansa. We had a very nice, very fruitful discussion with the family there. We had, we had every Saturday we have our cell meeting in Mansa, rural city. We go in the rural side of Zambia where a lot of issues are emerging. You find people in, in these villages moving helplessly, with not, not doing anything, people are just drinking alcohol, people are just doing all sorts of things to help themselves. It's the same thing even, even if you go into the urban now, there's no order, there's no culture. So we need to go back to what went wrong. Because, like I always say lately, now is not longer time to wink on ignorance. You can see that there's a lot of uh, suffering, a lot of uh, lack. We don't have rain so much as we used to. So a lot of ripple effects. The, our, our, our energy sector relies on water. We don't have electricity. The network goes so realize on, on electricity and uh, a lot of things going on. Our families are broken. Um, uh, we, we don't have good marriages. We don't have good friendship relationships. We don't have uh, nothing good anymore. So showing us that uh, the scripture in, in is it Acts 17 was right. God is no longer winking on ignorance. Now it's no longer time to wink on, wink on ignorance. It's time to get the truth. And if anyone wants to be saved from these troubles, from these pains, we need to get back to the truth. And that's why on these talks every Sunday, we we'll bring you that. And we have now gone full throttle. We are trying to grow, to expand, to help send this truth conversations, human beings need, need, we need to begin to dial on very important issues affecting us. Yeah. So, you can't substitute uh, evil with truth anymore, because now God is not winking on ignorance. We have to get the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is, is the word. And what is the word? The word is God. And what is God? God is the Spirit. So all those ways are can be substituted. Brother Noah, you're welcome. How is Mufulira? So you can substitute either ways with God. Spirit will guide you if Spirit is wet. So God is Spirit. So how does God guide you? The Spirit will guide you if the Spirit is away. Because that's what Jesus says in the book of John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, 
The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words are spirit. And God is spirit. The ends, God is the word. Spirit and word are, can be substituted. Christ says, the words that I speak, they are spirit. So the spirit will guide you. Or the rather, the word will guide you. The truth will guide you in our time. If the spirit is the word, then the spirit has to be in man to guide you. So for this word to guide you, it has to be in you, in your mind. It has to begin to to begin to influence you. And for it, for the word to be in you, you have to hear it. And that's why we, we bid you by day, we bid you by night to come to the house of talk so that we bring the, the spirit, the truth in us. Because the spirit will only guide you. If the spirit is the word, then the spirit will have to be in man to guide you. The word has to be in man before it begins to influence man. So we learn we go that brought us on earth specifically to learn from the earth. Even these troubles, the little troubles we're going to, these are the little troubles because the answer lies with us. We can fix all these troubles when we begin to let the truth come inside us and the truth begin to influence us. So when we learn, we learn from the earth. The earth was structured by God as a place where man begins to learn how to, how to be the righteous one the one who can fix things, the fixer. So every every speciality we have, we will achieve it when we go here. Everything you want to know about yourself, about the earth, we, we, we got it when we got here on earth. Everything should be gotten from the earth. We learn from the earth. We, When the natural man was a ruler, we realized the truth through scripture. The natural man was a ruler, the mind of the man was a ruler, the mind of the man couldn't give us truth, even up to now the mind of the man is not giving us truth so we are we realizing truth through scripture we are turning the pages we are passing in it we have to come all the time and sit where we are, turn the pages of turn the pages of scripture, bath in the scripture, because now the period of darkness is over the period of darkness, of course, period of darkness was the 6,000 year, was the, was the year God gave man the, the power the, over everything on the earth. God told Adam, I've given you dominion, power over the fishes, over, over the cattle, but that power was at the time frame. So man was to, to have dominion over the earth for only 6,000 years. So darkness was a period of 6,000 years. So it was a period of 6,000 years. You, pardon me, I'm trying to, to let my, my co-host in, so we'll, as we go on, she'll join us. She's trying to, to come in, but the network is very bad. So darkness was a period of 6,000 years, uh, the time when we, the ignorance was corrected, but now you notice we're no longer in 6,000 years. When we sin, the earth reacts. When you have the earth, the earth reacts. We are, we are in a time when we, we are only safe when we, when we act according to, to truth. So, in darkness, after 6,000 years, the angels had to descend into the natural mind. Remember, the angels are the words. Because in the book of uh, Hebrews 1, I believe, uh, Paul says, God did not call angels his children or his sons at any time. He says angels are flaming fire. Angels are spirits. And you notice John 6, the 3 says, the words that I speak are spirits. So angels are words. So angels had to descend into the natural mind. They, 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 these words have to be in our natural mind. And we need to begin to, when the words are in you, you begin to learn the earth right. The earth will teach you right because you use the, the, the word in you to learn how the earth functions. So, the, the earth is, is the environment God gave us to learn from. And uh, the, we need to come to the truth that we are not talking about religion. 
which talks about heaven being another place to go to. No, there is no heaven to go to because we are in it already. You hear me? There is no heaven to go to because we are in it already. Not a place to particularly to particular go, go to. We live in heaven already and we live in hell too. So we are in hell too. They coexist right beside each other. And God is the land. The world, that's why I would say we learn from the earth. God is the land. The natural law, the rules God has set in the land will either teach us to be right and if we reject them, they will teach us to be wrong. So the world eats the weak. Those who are weak will follow us. The, the weak in this case are those who refuse to follow the truth. It, the, the, the world eats those who, follow, who, who, who refuse to follow the truth. It kills them. It eats the weak. So we need to begin to use the truth. Use the, the truth to, to lead us. Luke 24 verse 6 says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Remember when, when Christ died, the, the disciples were confused, and they we want to understand truth now. We want to show you truth the way it's supposed to be. When Jesus Christ died, the, the disciples were not there. The disciples heard that, that Jesus had died. That's why it was confusing for them. Although now, uh, religion teaches us wrongly that uh, uh, the disciples knew, the disciples knew he was in heaven. They teach us as, as though this prophet went to another place in heaven. But uh, remember, heaven is the place you, we make. Heaven has got not, nothing to do with a particular place, but heaven is the, uh, 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 Paul says, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the disciples, uh, were terrified when Jesus appeared to them because they were not there when he died and they heard that he had died. And I uh, saw so Luke 24 36 says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were terrified. Why? Did he look like a spirit? Because remember, when they saw him, they were terrified. Why? Did he look like a spirit? Were they terrified because Christ looked like a spirit? They had heard. From here, say that you know, that he was dead. Um, you notice these disciples; they heard that Christ had died, and they went about doing their business. They fled. Mark 14 verse 50, and they all forsook him and fled. So they ran away. They never saw him die. So what's wrong with religion? Jesus showed us that he was one of them. Jesus was 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 an apostle. He was he was one of them, born from Mary and Joseph. He was the son of righteousness. He was the son of man of his time. Just like Ezekiel was the son of man of his time. You see, in, in, in every civilization, there is a son of righteousness, the son of man, one who comes to bring the truth to save the people if in that direction from destruction. Already, destruction is looming on us. And that's why we need to help people come out of this, this destructive behavior. Malachi 4 verse 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves with the stones. So Jesus says, uh, 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 Jesus knew he was a prophet, but people have given him an illusional, illusional uh, uh, appearance or description. Jesus says, I don't know. The religion folks say, he knows. Remember? A lot of things Jesus will, will, will say, I don't know. Because we can't, we, we, we can't begin to imagine beyond man's physical death. Beyond man's physical death, that's God's secret. The Bible says, only he knows, the angels don't know, we don't know. What we need to do to, to, to mind our minds on is the revealed things. Because uh, Moses says the revealed things belong to the children of men. And our children. They, they belong to us and our children. So Jesus says, I don't know. The religious folk says, He knows. What's wrong with religion? You see, remember Matthew 24 6 says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, 
No, not the angels of heaven. But my father wanted. He. he said, I'm not spirit. You say he is spirit. What's wrong with religion? Religion will tell you Jesus is spirit. But Jesus himself says he is not spirit. He says he doesn't know. Only the father knows. But religion says he knows. Let's start to set the truth right. If we do that, we will we will we will know how to live in this world, how to understand what God is doing and what God is, is, is saying. Jesus says, I don't know. The religious people say, He knows. He says, of the, of the day and, and thou knowest no man. He says, He's, he's not a spirit. The religious people say, No, He's a spirit. He says, I'm not spirit. You say, He's spirit. He says it himself in Luke 24, 36. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see for a, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Christ was saying, I'm not a spirit, I'm a man, I'm not dead. Handle me, for a spirit does not have the flesh and the blood that I have. So Christ says, I'm not spirit. You all go, go, on, go on and say, he's spirit. What's wrong with us? He says, he, 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 he says, I'm not God. You say he's God. Huh? Matthew 19, 17 says, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me God? There is none good but one, that is God. He is not God. But if thou wouldst enter into life, keep the commandments. So we gave Adam, the, we gave the, the first mind was given power and dominion over everything until we found someone to show us the truth, the Son of Man. In this case, the latest Son of Man to us was Jesus Christ. So the Bible is prophecy, family, like we say. And for you to understand the prophecy in the Bible, you need to find a history book. So we need to begin to understand that. I see my co-host has managed to join us. Sorry, love. I know the network is very bad where you're at. You're welcome. Uh, Good, you are here. You can relieve me of some of the duties. So we are reading the verses 11, 15. I don't know if you, if you can hear us or if you're able to read for us. Yes, I can hear you, Rev. Uh, yeah, it's been quite a nightmare to find connectivity. Um, so Revelations 11. Verse 15. Okay. The Bible says, and the seventh angel sounded, and there was, there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. You see, the parable here is saying, and the seventh angel sounded. Remember, seven is, is, is complete. Seven is the number of completeness. If we, if we, is seven is complete. On the seventh day, God rested. It's a number of rest, a number of completion. So, if we go to count eight, then we are talking about beginnings. Remember, Noah was the eighth man. So Noah was the man who, of beginnings, the beginning of the, of, the, of another dispensation. But in this case, the Bible is saying that the seventh angel sounded. The angels are words. The words when when we reach when man reach a level where man now is complete is done with his sins the seventh angel sounds and there were great voices in heaven even in the scripture saying when this when when the seventh angel uh, uh, when the seventh angel sounds these these are days and times when the truth has taken root on earth every man now has the truth in his head that's the time now we will say the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It's the time when we say seven, seven is the end of human influence on the world. That's the time now the, the truth takes its position. We enter the eighth, we start going into the eighth day, the, the, the day of beginnings of the kingdom, of the truth. So we are moving the mysteries out of the word of God. So we are removing the mystery is out of the word of God and making them clear to you, for you to begin to understand how to live the world. So we are saying the seventh angel sounded. 
Angels, remember angels are words. Angels are spirits. The way that, that I speak unto you are spirits. So these, it is the time when now man has reached the end of his sinfulness. Then we begin to live as in the kingdom. So that's what we're doing. We are removing the mysteries out of the word of God. The word of God which gives us power, the grandeur of dominion. It's not one thing that makes us royal royalty what makes us children of god which makes us complete and be in peace and and taken away from these sins or from these sufferings we all we all have to grow into godliness and every answer to human suffering perils is in this book but this book is a parable and this book was written to the prophets and the prophets need to you need to have a prophet in your midst to explain the parable. The Bible is a good book because it's God. There is only one that is good. That's what the Bible says. There is only one that is good. God. And God is the word. So, when God, what God does before he sends the man of God, he gives him to eat of the hidden manna. The hidden manna is the Bible. When the Bible says, he that overcome it, when you overcome the flesh, God will give you to eat of the, of the hidden manna. The hidden manna is the word of God. It's hidden because it's a parable. It needs someone with, with the spirit of God to explain it. Matthew 24, 46. Can you read for us, honey? Um, so Christ was the prophet who came to propagate the truth. And uh, if you been listening from the beginning, you understand what, uh, what we speak of, of Christ. And the problem is people are looking for illusions. And when they're looking for, 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 for illusions, when the prophet of the time comes, they don't expect it. So they miss it. You see, they, have, uh, they are dead end on one prophet. But the prophecy is the word. And the word is, that, is appearing in every dispensation through through a man just just like you and me and that that word is spoken on his tongue so they reject the son of man in every dispensation because they are not expecting him even in our time people will reject they'll be worshiping dead men because the bible says god is not the god of the dead you can't worship joseph you can't worship jesus now you can't worship uh, moses you can only worship the truth they spoke and the truth they spoke is always among us on the time of the prophet of the time and those prophets of the time are not uh, common a job says they are one in a thousand so we are suffering and dying because we are blind we are not expecting the the, the son of man uh, 24 46 okay matthew 24 um 46 the bible says blessed Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. You see, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So they reject the Son of Man because they are not expecting it. And, and, you, know, and you notice when the Son of Man comes, he is, he is different from a politician. The difference from, from prophets and politicians is that the politicians get all they can. A politician will profit out of you, will dry you, will milk you dry. Politicians have been ruling the world and see what the world has turned into. Suffering, disease, no water, no electricity. So the difference, the world should expect a prophet, not a politician. The difference from the prophet, the difference from prophet and politician is that politicians get all they can, but prophets give all they have. The prophet will, will, will give all he has. You see? And you know, the problem is why we fail to recognize the Son of Man because we, we have preference to what to who will bring the, the truth. But truth doesn't care who is telling it. As long as you can verify it with the scripture that is the truth. Truth is not yours either. Is, you see? Truth doesn't care who is telling it. Truth is not yours, neither is it mine. It's not yours and it's not mine. Truth is just truth. And when it comes, you see, because one who carries it won't show you that it is. 
by his behavior and his action and his speech. We don't author truth, it authors itself. We don't bring something because no, I've been so far, I've been around for 30 years, I've discovered something. No, no. We don't author truth, it authors itself. The one who is the best knower is God. Even me, I'm not the best knower. But I'm safe because I trust in the word. And I, I follow the word meticulously to do the right things which God wants me to do. So the, the one who, who is the best knower is, is God. He says, let, let us make man in our image. Then man is the original God. Remember, the best knower is God, right? Then God says, let us make man in our image. So if man is made in the image of God, then man is the original God, the best knower. That's why we learn from the earth, we learn from the, the, the things happening in the earth. Because God cannot be known as a person. We know him through the word. So the new name, so the new name, that's why Christ says, they were called God unto whom the truth came. That's why we cannot support the world system of, of doing things. Even though you, you notice we will brought in uh, the new name for the evangelical supporting politicians all the way. They are willing to destroy the, the country in order to, to make their life to, to be truth. But truth is in the mind. It should live in your mind and uh, prophets rule. Prophets must rule your conscience. When the truth is in you, meaning the prophecies of the past are in you. And the prophets must rule your conscience so that you, you can understand scripture. They prepared the, the way for you. Uh, Malachi 3 verse 1. Malachi 3 verse 1. Um, the Bible says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So you, can, you cannot claim to be the spiritual literate. You cannot claim to be spiritual literate when you have not been reborn of the word. You can only be spiritually literate. Even I, as a man of God, I cannot lie to you if I'm not reborn with the word, my character, my behavior. You shall know them by the truth. So the messenger always comes. The Son of Man comes to prepare a way for the Son of for the truth to come and live in his temple, which is your brain. But you, you cannot claim to be a spiritual literate when you have not been reborn of the word. That's why it's very very cardinal and no one is running away from it. We need to learn the earth through the lessons of the word if we are going to be spiritually literate and if we are going to make right decisions. And we need to be spiritually literate. And how can you represent God and are illiterate? No spiritual understanding of the word of God. When I'm talking about illiterate, I'm talking about spiritual understanding of the, of the word of God. And that can only happen when your mind is reborn by the word. Illiterate means that you cannot read with comprehension. That's what illiterate means when you go to the Oxford Dictionary. It says you cannot read with comprehension. Just like the word of God, you have to read it with comprehension. And comprehension means your behavior. It affects your behavior and your character. It means you have comprehended. Hebrews 1, 6. Because when the prophet comes, he won't um, be deaf and dumb of the scriptures. Hebrews one six. Hebrews one six. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. So when when the when the Son of Man comes, the angels worship him. They worship him. The angels are words. Worship, remember, we mentioned, we explained what worship means. Worship 
has two ways. They are worship, worship like like, like a, in a ship. A ship is a vessel that moves on water, and the ship is named after the cargo it carries. We have got a, a, a food ship, marine ship. We have got a cargo ship. In this case, man becomes a ship carrying the word, word ship. So when the Bible says, and again, when you bring it in the first born into the world, every time the one, the best Noah, the son of man comes in, the angels would have worshipped him already. They would, the angels would have spoken about him already. They have, would have carried the truth unto the listeners already. So the, the son of man is the first begotten among the dispensation, and it is not different than the scriptures. The head of every man is Christ. The head of all, all of, see, the head of all of them is the one that can explain what all of them saw, head spoke. When the Christ, when Bible says the head of every man is Christ, Christ is the head of all. When Christ was alive, he was the head of them all. He was the head of Paul, uh, uh, the head of Jacob, Ezekiel. So the head of all of them is is the one that can explain what all of them saw him and uh, and, and spoke the head of your head is your mind for example the head of your head is your mind your mind is what is sitting on the top which is the brain your brain is where the word of god goes to sit so your brain is the, is the throne of truth the truth sits on your head on your brain your brain is the throne of truth. That's what it was designed for. So when the truth takes up a seat on your brain, then the head of your brain is the truth. Is, is the mind that sits there. So when you eat the truth, you become the head of all of them. Revelation 10 verse 10. Family, we need to rearrange, to relearn the truth so that we begin to review the earth the way God wanted us to build. Revelation 10, verse 10. So, when the Son of Man comes, he takes all the inheritance, all the knowledge of the preceding prophets. So, if if I want to have the true man of God in our dispensation, he's going to be the head of them all. Because he's going to take all the truth they had and He's going to master them and teach them to us. Christ says, when he comes, he will lead you into truth. He will teach you things. You will do greater things than I have done. So, uh, 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 Revelation 10, verse 10. Revelation 10, verse 10. The Bible says, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Same thing is when Ezekiel, the son of man, came on it. God says, Son of man, take a book and eat it. So all of them left this inheritance for me. If I'm the son of man, then all of them left the inheritance. So I need to take the, the little book from the angel. Angel means the angels are words and eat it up. It will be sweet in my mouth because uh, the word of God is very nice when you hear it, but it will be bitter in your belly. It becomes bitter because it begins to disturb your blood. It, 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 it begins to take you from your fleshly desire into truth, and sometimes it can be unbearable. Um, uh, so, uh, Habakkuk 2 verse 20. The truth will always be in a place where it was created to be. And the truth and the truth in this world was created to live in any every one of his mind. The mind was created to house the truth. That's why if the truth is not in the mind, we are troubled. We are in pain. We create hell. For six thousand years we have not allowed the truth to be in our mind. We have created the world we are failing to, to live in now. The truth is in the place that was created to receive it. So even if when the son of man comes, it was he whom the Lord created to receive that truth. And he becomes the head of them all because he's, he's carrying all of them in his head who have passed the prophets. Habakkuk 2 verse 20. Habakkuk 2 verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. You see, the Lord is in his holy temple. 
What is the temple? The mind of the Son of Man. So the whole earth must listen to him. So the truth is in the place that was created to receive it. I'm verifying what is in the truth. You notice. Every prophet believed in me. If I'm telling the truth, then every prophet believed in me. Even Jesus believed in me. All of them were host to truth. They, they were the ones hosting the truth in their dispensation. And in the dispensation, if there's going to be a prophet, a true prophet, they are going to host the truth. And they host the truth because you can see it by their character. Not because they have stayed. They would have got a lot of people. They have got a lot of money. It's their behavior. It takes behavior to be the savior. So Jesus was a host to the word of God. Moses was a host to the word of God. Isaiah was a host to the word of God. Revelation 3, verse 20. Revelation 3.20 so, so the truth is in the Son of Man and let all the world listen for me. Let all, all the world Revelation listen for me. Revelation 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You see, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup up with him and he and with me. Now, let me tell you what the, all the prophets are saying. So every time the word of truth bounces up on your eardrums, I stand at the door knocking. The door, the door to your truth is your eardrum. So every time the word of truth bounces up on your eardrum, the word is knocking on your door. The ear is the doorway through which the words enter. The two honorable re recorders, the two honorable recorders sitting on the right and left, the word is God. The, when you understand, the word is a grant of dominion. Is what gives us power. So what, that's what is happening. Is I stand at the door. The truth is knocking on uh, over your ears. How is it knocking when the Son of Man is speaking? You are hearing. He says that you are, you are accept the truth or you don't. John three sixteen. Honey, let me know uh, when we time is gone because we need to go to our physical meeting as per usual. The online are just meant for us to encourage one another before we go into the into the physical um, meetings which we have both in Lusaka and in Mansa and for you who are listening to us you are free to come to to, to, to the two according to your proximity. So we meet physically in Mansa today just after immediately after this online and the, my wife who is uh, my co-host also they are meeting in Lusaka at the same time. So you let me know honey when we are when we are almost there. I think we, we just have him. about four minutes. Okay, John, okay. Let me just read John 3, the 16, then we, we can we'll finish up next week. John 3, 16. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The only S-O-N, son, son man, the only son of man, who came, so the, the only son, S-U-N, Malachi 2 verse 4, unto you that here my name shall the son of righteousness appear. The only son man who can take you to true understanding of the word of God. He, he gave that son who can who, who, who the only one to take you to the true understanding of God. Every human being is a begot, begotten being, but the son of man is the only begotten son of God to give you the true understanding of the word of God. And when he uh, when he comes, the son of man comes with all of them. All the prophets.
I think we will end here because time is not with us. We will continue next Sunday. Please keep coming. We know the network is very bad, but you've been a good spot. You all uh, stuck it out. This is how it should be. We should preach the word of God in season and out of season. So we will close here. We'll end here. I'll ask my co-host, Mam Mbuka, Mam Tiezi. You can um, say something before we close. Now maybe just to say thank you, Rev, for this time and the word that you brought for us. Um, despite the challenges with connectivity, um, like you said, we preach the word in season and out of season, and we will not re relent uh, until every every um, soul hears uh, the the word. So just to say thank you for, for your time. I think looking at will not go through. through um, the details of the summary uh, because we started late due to the, the connectivity challenges. So just to say thank you so much for today and, and the word was insightful. Thank you so much, family, friends. Wow, we'll see you next week. So for those who can join us in our physical church services, the numbers to call are on top of this video. Yeah, or if you may, you can call plus two six zero nine seven seven four one five five one five or plus two six zero nine seven seven four nine two eight five six. We love you unconditionally and please come and grow with us. You will not regret. We need to begin to have conversations over this because we know whatever we believe led us to what we are in and, and it's not a pleasant situation. We need to reevaluate what we believe in. So we will welcome you to this talk every Sunday, I mean, yes, every Sunday morning. So thank you again. We'll see you next Sunday. Invite someone. Bye.